Well, today we're joined by Sister Agnes Miriam of the Cross. Now, she's founded a, a Christian community and a monastery in Damascus. She's been living there and working there for the last 12 years. Thank you very much, uh, Sister, for joining us today. Well, my first question is, you've been there for 12 years working in Damascus, in Syria, around different areas. Has there been a difference in your work uh, throughout those years and in the recent months that we've seen uprisings and violence? Of course, uh, we have been uh, facing uh, a reality evolving to get more and more tragical, dramatic. Uh, you know, it's uh, a real descent to hell. So for us, it was new because uh, we work in Syria for the restoration of this monastery uh, since 1994. And uh, we could really appreciate uh, the, the security in Syria. You know, it's a security, of course, which is imposed somehow uh, by a regime which is very strong and uh, sometimes a kind of uh, totalitarian. But nevertheless, the reality is that everybody was living in security. Now, uh, when the events begin uh, to raise, we were very happy because we also wanted, felt that there, there is a need for a change. But uh, very, uh, very quickly, uh, we got uh, bad news uh, from uh, uh, local witnesses uh, in our diocese, in Homs, and also from Damascus, in Dara, where uh, what those witnesses, civilians, without any political uh, uh, position, you know, they were counting us, telling us stories that were exactly the contrary of what we were seeing on the television. So we, we, we took position for the objective truth, the real information, and also for solidarity, because slowly by slowly you had to help opposition where you had hundreds of people detained so you were also helping the opposition? Yes, so. it's uh, what we call the interior opposition, the, the, the civilian opposi opposition, which is not under any party and not armed. No, no, not armed. Uh, you, you, had, you have always, until today, uh, p peaceful demonstrations, okay? Uh, so we helped uh, in our village uh, to, uh, free, to set free people, also, if there is a need of uh, humanitarian help, even we had the opposition meeting in our monastery. And the first appeal uh, for dialogue and reconciliation was in our monastery. Now, I'm sure you're very well aware of all the criticism that has been thrown uh, your way. So what is your, your relationship with the Assad regime? Uh, you know, I have no relationship with a regime. We are a religious entity, and our authority is religious. It's not political, uh, it's not even civilian, you know. We had um, uh, mainstream reporters that uh, came to Syria, and uh, for, a one, for a while I went with them on the, on the scene, you know. But uh, in January, uh, in December, I asked to go to the opposition parts, uh, where the guerrilla were already implemented. Okay, and so I could have an idea as an eyewitness. And in the beginning, we did not even know who were those people, and we said that those people, uh, there were unidentified band uh, armed gangs. You know, we said we don't know whom they are, but they are spreading chaos disorder, uh, killings, abducting, and uh, many kind, you know, of uh, methods uh, to destabilize a country and also to implement uh, a kind of preparation for a civil war. For example, they would kill uh, very targeted, uh, targeted, for example, they will kill Alawit. I have seen 
uh, in Homs a, a, a flock of, uh, of blood because in uh, the day before people, you know, those unidentified gangs have been uh, beheading nine Alawite people just because they were Alawite. I have seen this with my eyes and I, I talked to the population, the Sunni population. Whom do you think has, has perpetrated this? They didn't know. They said they were uh, wearing like soldiers. But do you think that uh, it's the loyal soldier? Do you, what do you want me to do? I cannot shut up. If, if, if nobody is reporting this, I feel that if I know it and I do not report it, I am helping uh, criminals to continue their way. And, and after, even a Human Rights Watch began to talk about things perpetrated by insurrection, armed insurrection, affiliated, saying that it is affiliated to the opposition, that we're doing things against humanity. And this is an improvement. But we're talking now about the Syrians in general. Do they want a regime change? Look, I think that yes, and that the regime uh, has fallen. There is no more this regime. You will never ever have the same regime onward. Now, the Christian, they have been discriminated, not because they are Christian, but because being Christian, they could not participate in Islamist demonstrations, okay? And sometimes it arrived to violences against them, uh, heavy viol violences. Uh, you know, we had more than 200,000 Christians that had to flee out uh, because of this ambiguous position. But we have to hear, uh, to discern between exterior opposition. You know, in uh, some of the leaders of the opposition outside of Syria, they never came back to Syria since 30 years. So they don't have a, a popular ground, okay? They want to come, to be able to come, but with the help of uh, uh, foreign, foreign intervention, military, but you have the interior opposition uh, who doesn't want uh, this kind of foreign intervention. Uh, they want changes, but without violence and without destroying everything. When we're talking about a solution, uh, a third way, as you mentioned earlier, in, in this uh, conflict, how is that going to happen, given that there are a lot of guns on the street? How is the solution to work, and what exactly can be done? There is a big violence, you know, but uh, it's not everywhere in Syria. Uh, the violence res reside nearby the borders and is following a special plan. But in the inner country, uh, you have large pieces of uh, people, uh, of uh, ground, of lands, which is not under violence. And also, even in the cities where you have violence, they have so much tasted uh, what would be uh, a kind you know, of a country, like in Iraq, completely destroyed, that many of the opposition begin to think and to say it's not the way, the, the violence is not the way. So since one year, we have been, um, one, more than 1,000 people have been invited to Sahara, uh, to rec tourist uh, complex, uh, to think about a third way. And uh, this uh, third way, uh, the name of this third way is, is Musalaha Initiative. The Musalaha Initiative does not come from the opposition, does not come from the regime. It comes from the silent majority of the Syrian people, uh, from the leaders of families, of tribes, of clans, uh, and also from religious leaders. Uh, they meet together and uh, they were very uh, active uh, when uh, there were challenges that nobody could solution it but them. For example, in Homs, uh, you had uh, many families completely trapped in uh, uh, streets. Uh, they were controlled by the opposition. 
but the army was going to bomb them. And so they were under high danger. They were trapped for one month. Nobody would know how to, to do it. So Musalaha intervened, you know. Uh, it, it, the notables, they have their cousins inside the opposition, for example. And religious leader, they have their own people, believers in those streets. So they made negotiation secretly. And slowly by slowly, everybody could go out. Well, there are also other uh, Christian or Catholic figures, uh, aside from yourself, who are also making comments on the, on the Syrian conflict. And there are some of them who don't agree with you, who say that the Syrians need outside help, they need intervention, yet you're both all from the same community. What do you say to this and what do you think of this? Uh, I want to say that the Syrian people has to define by itself, with itself, what they want. And my claim is that let the Syrian people alone and the majority of the Syrian people, they want change, but the change would be in peace, in dialogue, in reconciliation. I hope that the social tissue in uh, Syria is so strong that they will make, they are doing a new social pact on new basis without the, if you want, uh, the ideology of a party, a political party. And it will be stronger, it will be better, and it is open to a new future full of, uh, you know, more contemporaneous achievement. And I hope with the blessing of the Patriarch Kirillos, I respect and I give him all my salutation as a believer. Well, Sister uh, Agnes Miriam, thank you very much for your time.